Do you like living on the edge? Do you hate being told what you can and can't do with your 3D printer? Then I have just the thing for you. If you've built a custom 3D printer or have been 3D printing for some time, you're likely familiar with or have at least heard of Clipper firmware. With the explosion in popularity of Voron printers a few years ago, many people were exposed to this awesome firmware for the first time. Fast forward to today and roughly 85% of the printers I have here are running it. While this firmware checks nearly all of my boxes as is, I've had multiple people tell me I should take a look at Danger Clipper, a community maintained fork of Mainline Clipper that I'd best describe as Clipper without training wheels. This gives you new features not in Mainline and additional control of your printer so that you can configure it to your exact needs. In this video, we'll dive into Danger Clipper, take a look at some of its features, and cover the process of getting it running on your printer. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. The printer I'm going to be running Danger Clipper on is my Voron Trident, that we installed the takeoff toolhead on last month. When I was configuring sensorless homing, I ran into some limitations that required me to use a homing override to drop the voltage and retract the toolhead. I was told Danger Clipper had quite a few additional features that were really beneficial to sensorless homing, which is what really put it on my radar. While I have plans to further upgrade this printer, it's currently right where we left it, minus the addition of a rad custom build plate that Ember Prototypes made and sent over. This thing is absolutely gorgeous, and it's currently available as a creator plate in a massive range of sizes. If you decide to pick one up, a portion of each sale directly supports the channel, and they can also make custom designs, so I'll have a link in the description for anyone interested. Before going in and installing Danger Clipper, I think it's important to talk about a few of the reasons you might want to. As mentioned, the key benefit is the additional control and features that this fork gives you. They have a page in their documentation that highlights some of these that I'll have on screen and in the description for anyone wanting to take a deeper dive. Some of the standouts to me are Exclude Object being enabled by default. This is an add-on module for Clipper required to use variable meshing and cancel object. Next is MCU non-critical. In Clipper, anytime an MCU disconnects, the printer errors out and requires a firmware restart. While this makes a lot of sense when it's something like your main controller, a lot of people are using add-on MCUs for things like accelerometers. Normally, you'd have to enable the MCU when you're running input shaping, and then disable it when you disconnect the USB. With Danger Clipper, you can define an MCU as non-critical. In the accelerometer example, this would mean when it's connected, it works as expected, and when you disconnect it, then it's simply ignored. For sensorless homing, a big one is that underneath the driver, you're able to define a homing current. I found that running my motor current at 1 worked well for printing, but gave me a really hard time when trying to dial in sensorless homing. Instead of needing a custom homing macro or homing override, you can just define a homing current. Another for sensorless homing is that the way my tool head is positioned, if I just home X and Y, when Y homes, it collides with the back right motor in an awkward way causing it to shift a few millimeters. Because of this, I want X to home, then back off a set distance, and then Y to home and do the same. Similar to dropping the voltage, I was able to do this using a macro, but the functionality is baked into Danger Clipper. In Mainline Clipper, if you have homing retract enabled, the printer homes an axis, backs off a set distance, and homes again. While this might work for a mechanical or optical switch, it's very inconsistent with sensorless homing and not recommended. With Danger Clipper, if you have a sensorless homing enabled, setting a retract distance retracts after homing, but it won't attempt to home again, which is exactly what I want. Next is PID Profile. You're probably familiar with needing to PID tune your bed and hot end, as this is a standard step when running through your firmware checks. However, this is usually set with the temp and fan speed for the filament type you print the most with, or somewhere in the middle of multiple filaments you use. It works, but it's not ideal since your temperatures and fan speeds are likely to be very different when printing with something like PLA versus ABS. With Danger Clipper, you can create multiple PID profiles for the filaments you commonly print with. This makes it really simple to quickly swap between the values and ensures your heaters are consistent for the various environments that they're running in. Lastly is the ability to define max accelerations per axis. In most cases, when you run input shaping, one direction will be your limiting factor. More often than not, with Core XY printers, this is the Y-axis. 
that axis defines the max acceleration you set in firmware to avoid a hit to print quality. With Danger Clipper, you can define a different max acceleration for each axis, so when only one is being used, it's able to use the higher value. This is something I'm really excited to play around with once I've got this printer a little further along. These are a few of my favorites, but I highly recommend looking at all of the different features that Danger Clipper has to see which ones stand out to you. The last thing I want to say before we do jump in and install Danger Clipper is to make sure that you're already familiar with Standard Clipper and when you're playing around with new features that you are close to your printer and ready to hit the emergency stop if needed. If you're not careful, things can go wrong which can damage your printer or even potentially be dangerous, hence the name. While I love the freedom to make my printer do what I want, this is a trade-off that you should be aware of. Before making any changes to your working printer, I always recommend backing up your config. We covered the Clipper backup script in a past video, but since then it's gotten even easier to use. All that's needed is to create a GitHub repository, define an access token, and run the installer script after SSHing into your printer. The on-screen installer guides you through the rest of the process, and in just a few minutes you'll have a backup available should you ever need to restore a setting. To install Danger Clipper, there are three options. The first is to manually clone the repository, the second is to use Kaya, the Clipper installer and update helper, and the third is adding a Git remote to your existing Clipper installation. In this example, we'll be manually cloning the repository. Start by SSHing into your printer using a console. Even with the backup script, I recommend storing a backup of your entire Clipper install just for safekeeping. To do this, enter the command on screen. I'll have these commands linked in the description so you can copy paste them and a link to the Danger Clipper repository that also contains them. This moves your current Clipper directory to a new directory called Clipper Old. You may never need it, but I would rather have it just in case. Then run the git clone command to clone the Danger Clipper repository to your printer. This was a really quick process for me. Finally, run the restart command to reboot Clipper, which will boot into Danger Clipper. Looking at your web interface, you very likely won't see any obvious difference, but if you click on the information icon in the update manager for Clipper, it will say unofficial remote URL with the repository we just installed. The final thing you need to do is reinstall any add-on Clipper modules that you previously had. For me, this was Beacon, Camp, Clipper Backup, and TMC Autotune. These directories still exist, so just running the install command for the respective add-on will get them right back up and running. Congratulations, you are now running Danger Clipper. So far, I went in and deleted my homing override macros, defined the homing voltage, and set the homing retract so I am back up and running. I also deleted the exclude object module that was in my printer config since this is now baked in. This is really just the start and once I've upgraded the gantry and motors on this printer, I really want to play around with running different accelerations to see how it performs and what difference it can make to print times. And that has been Danger Clipper, or more of a what is it and how to get it installed on your printer. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you at least have a better idea of what this firmware is and whether it's something that you are or are not interested in checking out further. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.